Indonesia's capital, Jakarta, is sinking really fast, at the rate of around 12 centimeters per year. Unless something is done in a couple of years, the city could completely be underwater. But that doesn't necessarily have to happen. The Indonesian government is currently working to save its dear capital city, having revived plans to build a gigantic seawall around it. Known as the Garuda Seawall, they've put together a 40-year plan with an initial budget of a whopping $10.5 billion. When completed, the seawall will be unlike anything the world has ever seen. So, stick around as we show you how Indonesia, through its seawall, plans to carry out this modern-day miracle. Welcome back to Just Know It 254. Before we continue, please subscribe to this channel. I promise you will have the best videos and I will make them so interesting for you to watch and learn. Please subscribe. If you're wondering why Jakarta is the fastest sinking megacity in the world, the answer is pretty straightforward. First of all, the city is home to numerous high-rise buildings. In fact, it has the most shopping malls in the world and currently ranks 12th for the number of skyscrapers. These tall buildings carry excessive weights that tend to pressure the soil underneath. Secondly, the water shortages in the region have led to many groundwater extraction activities, which isn't doing any good to its landscape. For decades, thousands, and possibly millions of very deep holes have been drilled into the city's ground in search of water. Finally, the city lies on the northwest coast of the mighty Java Sea, and reports have it that the water level keeps rising as high as 200 centimeters every year. You see, this explains why Jakarta has always been plagued by flooding and tsunamis that destroy lives and properties. Reports have it that flooding in the coastal city is estimated to cost damages worth $133 million annually and would rise to a staggering $637 million in the coming decades. That is something to worry about, but not even close to what has been predicted to happen to the city. Experts have speculated that about one-third of the capital may be totally submerged in water by the year 2050 if the issue is left unchecked. The signs are increasingly worrisome, as between the years 1997 and 2005, over four meters of land have sunk into the sea in some parts of Jakarta. Clearly, something has to be done, because if neglected, we wonder what the fate of more than 10 million residents living in the city will be. So, to solve this huge problem, the Indonesian government came up with several plans. One of those plans was to relocate the country's capital from the island of Java to the island of Borneo, with the construction of a $34 billion futuristic city named Nusantara. It also banned the extraction of groundwater in the megacity, but perhaps its brightest idea is to build a giant seawall around the entire city. Unfortunately, when the idea came up in 2010, it faced serious opposition from some environmental groups and local politicians, who argued that it would disrupt many livelihoods and damage the marine ecosystem. Unfortunately, the situation in Jakarta has grown worse, and now, more than a decade later, the seawall project is being revived. Erlanga Hartardo, Indonesia's coordinating minister of economic affairs, speaking at a seminar about the seawall project, emphasized the need for the seawall. He revealed that parts of Jakarta sink up to 25 centimeters annually because of excessive groundwater extraction and urban development. We need the giant seawall to stop the land from sinking and the sea from flooding, which keeps happening all the time. He went ahead to mention that the project would require three phases of construction extending past 2040, with the first two stages requiring $10.5 billion in funding. However, he didn't say how much money would be needed for the third phase. As for the construction blueprints, the Garuda Seawall will span a length of 25 miles and measure 80 feet in height. Located on the northern bay of Jakarta, these gigantic walls will be strategically built on the east and west sides of the bay. To make it more attractive for private investors, the surface of this great seawall will be turned into a center of urban development with social amenities like an airport, a harbor, a toll road, a residential area, an industrial area, waste treatment, a water reservoir, and green areas. All these are in a space of about 4,000 hectares. Not only that, it will also have 17 artificial islands that, once finished, will be home to an entirely new part of Jakarta, expected to house 2 million people. A deadline of 2040 has been set for the completion of both ends of the seawall. However, the construction of a 30-kilometer-long river and beach dike on the coast of Jakarta is ongoing. The project, 
which was flagged off in October 2014, has a deadline set for 2030. It is an extension and strengthening of the already existing dike that was run over by the Great Jakarta Flood of 2007. To complete the entire project in 2050, a freshwater reservoir within the walls of Garuda will be constructed. The aim is to address the water supply problem in Jakarta, which relies on groundwater extraction. The wall would include within it a freshwater reservoir to store rainwater and river water from the 13 rivers that crisscross Jakarta, providing clean water for its residents. After all that said, the big question now is how the Indonesian government plans to raise the $10.5 billion in funds to carry out this massive project. Quite intelligently, they sought private participation as they wouldn't be able to fund the project single-handedly. According to Erlanga Hartardo, Coordinating Minister of Economic Affairs, there are several investors who want to invest in the project's construction. The project is planned to be constructed using the public-private partnership. He also mentioned that, in reality, the construction of the seawall project had previously commenced, even though it was not integrated. Worthy of mention is the Dutch and South Korean government's involvement in Garuda. Both countries had pledged a total sum of $19 million to be used in carrying out feasibility studies for the second and third phases of the Garuda seawall. However, one question lingers in the minds of skeptics and critics who argue that the seawall enclosure would instead erode the already sinking city more. The giant seawall would obstruct the flow of the 13 rivers, turning Jakarta Bay into a giant pool of sewage. And since the whole mega-project fails to address the cause of land subsidence, it will eventually sink, says Parid Ridwanutten, a sea and coastal campaign manager at the Indonesia Environmental Forum. The trade suggested that the government should focus more on rejuvenating coastal areas by replanting mangroves and restoring riverbanks crowded with housing to a more natural state. In response to this skepticism, Mr. Erlanga assured that the construction of the project would not disrupt the ecosystem, as ecological studies have been conducted. In response to critics, he said, environmental issues have been prioritized. Moreover, the giant seawall has doors for water to go through, so it will not disrupt the ecosystem for mangroves or fish. Additionally, Erlanga highlighted that the task force responsible for constructing the giant seawall had been deliberated within the economic ministry. He emphasized the necessity for collaboration among all parties to address the issue of land subsidence. In conclusion, though the Garuda Giant Seawall Project has been met with heavy criticism, especially from several Indonesians who are not sure if the project will actually be effective, it is a massive step in the right direction. The government cannot afford to sit back and watch Jakarta sink. And if a seawall will help, then it's plausible. What do you think of this project? We'd love to hear your opinion on this in the comments section. Remember to like the video and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for tuning in and see you in the next video.